Now I will be honest with you, autumn isn't one of my favourite seasons because I love the energy that you get from spring and summer and winter is definitely on the way and from the ground we've been harvesting loads of crops so autumn is a perfect time to give back not just to the garden but more importantly to the soil where we grow the crops from and in this video i'm going to show you how i prepare raised beds ready for winter to guarantee really good results next year and this is a key part of my gardening calendar as gardeners we want healthy plants because healthy plants usually equals good crops but with a garden it's quite intensive and we're always taking material and nutrients from the ground and the most fundamental thing for a healthy productive garden is a healthy soil and because we're taking so much we need to look after and cherish the soil because soil isn't just made up of organic matter and rock particles broken down it's also made up of billions of tiny microbes that we can't see that help make nutrients plant available and also fend off the bad guys so autumn usually involves quite a bit of clearing and what i used to do was just take the whole plant out and grab the whole thing and take the roots out and just so you know I will be saving uh, these pods for seeds these are yin yang beans they have an awesome bean but what I should actually be doing is just removing the top part and leaving the roots in but why should we be leaving plant roots in the ground well the reason is is that plant roots as they decompose provide organic matter which feeds the soil microbes and soil microbes are great because what they do by feeding off the organic matter is that they break it down and it releases nutrients which makes nutrients more plant available for the plants that we're trying to grow uh, so we can harvest things like beans or any other crops and the other thing is when a soil microbe dies it also releases nutrients into the ground that the plant can take up so we don't actually want to be taking any organic matter from the ground we want to be leaving as much as possible in and adding more so with any vegetables or crops that you have purposefully planted and grown always cut them at the base just so you can try and leave as many of the roots in the ground but when it comes to weeds it's slightly different you want to actually try and remove these roots so you can see the roots here because weeds are very good at being able to grow back from roots especially things like dandelions and thistles so these are much better put on the compost bin instead so as you can see i've cleared the bed of weeds i've still got chard that i'm just going to leave in uh, over winter because we'll get some new growth in spring so some lovely green leaves in spring that is really valued at that time of year um, but once you end up with the actual plant matter of what you've planted, you have two options. The first option is you can place this material on the compost bin, and that's absolutely fine. But the second option is to use the chop and drop method. So the idea with this is that these plants have taken nutrients uh, from the, this soil, and all you're doing is chopping this up finally, which is what I'm going to do now and then you'll then be placing it back onto the soil in the form of organic matter and it's just going to provide that extra bit of fertility and it has all of winter uh, to break down and when you place stuff like this organic matter on the surface of the soil it breaks down a lot faster than if you put it in a compost bin I've chopped up the material so it's pretty nice and fine and I've also given this bed a bit of a rake just a very light rake just to even it out a little bit so the final thing to do with this chop and drop technique is to drop it so I just like grab a handful and kind of spread it out over the surface like this and you can just like pretend that you've got snowflakes and it's snowing uh, but it's snowing plant material so a little less exciting but certainly far more exciting for the all the soil microbes so if you just do a nice even layer like that it's going to make 
a really big difference to the fertility of your soil and is just going to contribute uh, to that long-term build-up of organic matter and soil carbon and ultimately a more healthy garden. So you can see there's a, a light surface of material on the ground. Now there's nothing stopping you from bringing in plant material from elsewhere in the garden. This is some bolted fennel. We've got loads at the moment. Uh, bringing it to a bed that you're preparing and then chopping and dropping this, uh, adding it into the mix as well. So you're very welcome to actually bring in uh, resources to do that exact job. In fact, the more the better. To a certain extent, you don't want to have, say, a layer that's around a centimetre thick or just under uh, half an inch. You want to be able to see parts of the soil underneath because you don't want too thick a layer um, of plant material like this. Now, once you've applied this layer of chop and drop over your bed, if you've decided to do that, the next thing to do is just to add a bit of compost over the top. So preferably aim for a two and a half centimeter or an inch layer of compost spread lightly over the top of the raised bed. For that one inch layer is a really good target because that's just going to be giving you loads of not just nutrients and organic matter but also loads of microbes from the compost and really help supercharge your soil uh, ready for next year. Now ideally you do want to use compost but if you don't have access to lots of homemade compost or ready compost you can use partly decomposed compost that's no problem at all or you can even go a year without using compost that too is fine there are ways of being able to get through that no problem at all especially with things like chop and drop they're going to make a huge difference or you could consider investing in municipal compost so you've removed the plants from the ground and preferably you've left the roots in and then maybe you've chopped and dropped and then added a layer of compost. Well, after doing that, it's time for the last step, which is to add a protective layer. Now, this isn't ideal. This is plastic, but if you already have plastic, it's best to use it and make the most of it because it'll be a waste uh, not to really utilize it. And then after that has come to the end of its life, use something far more organic like cardboard or newspaper. And with newspaper, if you just give it a little rub and you don't get a big, thick black smudge on your finger, then it doesn't have any petroleum ink and it's safe to use on the ground. So why do you need a protective layer? Well, it isn't completely necessary, but it does help with three key things. The first is weeds. The worst thing is starting a growing season and you look at your raised beds and it's full of weeds. And that is a main reason why I like to put a protective layer over the raised bed because it means I can really hit the ground running in spring. All I need to do is lift off the covering and the ground underneath is ready to plant directly into. Now the second reason is water. Very often we get really heavy rainfall here in Wales and the water even though it won't cause too much nutrient runoff if you have very heavy clay soil like we do then it isn't the best conditions and it gets it all really soggy and then the third thing is warmth if you use a dark covering like this it helps warm up the soil in spring which again is going to help anything that you sow into it afterwards uh, or plant out. So if you're using cardboard, you want around three layers of cardboard and then with newspaper, kind of flip the newspaper out in half and then weigh it down. That'll work really well. What I'm doing here is, as you can see, just on cue, it's uh, pretty windy. So I'm just trying to hold this down. So what I do is at the ends, I kind of just tuck in this material using a spade uh, down between the board and also the soil that keeps it in uh, nice and neatly. And then what I'll do after this around here, uh, like I've actually done for the bed to my left, is put down some wooden posts uh, and that is just really gonna help keep it in place all through winter.
So my plan for the next couple of months up until mid-December is to continue putting beds to sleep as they open up around the garden. So the next one is going to be that far one with all of the bolted fennel uh, just to the right of the solar tunnel. Now some beds are going to have winter vegetables in them like this leek bed. So what should you do in this situation? Well, it's really simple. Don't worry about mulching them now. Mulch them in February. And if you have any winter veg left over, like the kale there, which might still be growing, then just actually apply a mulch around the kale. And then once you pull the kale out, leaving the roots in, you can then plant directly straight into that ground. So it works anyway. If you can just focus on trying to get that inch or two and a half centimeters of compost on some point during the year, preferably this time of year, because it's quiet, it's going to make a huge difference. So I'm just going to continue getting the garden ready for winter and make sure you give yourself a nice proper rest. And if you're looking for something to do, you may be interested in checking out an online course that I did back in May, which is designed about being a more efficient gardener and then in turn having a far more productive garden so if that sounds interesting to you you can find out more at morefoodlesseffort.com and i look forward to seeing you again soon in another video